Hi, I'm Ian Hansen. I uh, work at uh, DigitalOcean. We do uh, server hosting. We try to be the uh, simplest cloud for developers to spin up uh, their servers with us. And we've got a small team that understands our uh, business, tries to measure our KPIs, see how we're performing. And as we grow, their dashboards get slower and slower. And the problem is we're providing them this very over-provisioned uh, MySQL server that is 100% CPU processing these aggregate queries over the entire table span, rolling up these um, summary queries, and using zero of the other cores, because uh, just the database is not architected for summary queries, it's architected for row-level operations. This is a, a replica of our database, which runs our software. And it's not meant for our dashboarding team. It's, uh, it's meant for our row-to-row -row operations. So as we grow, our reports are getting slower, and our SQL team, which really knows how to build SQL, uh, is getting less effective. They're not able to investigate the data as well because it just takes longer to dive into the data. It's not fun to change a parameter, wait five minutes, and see if that helps gain insight. You want to have a result within a few seconds. So we knew what we wanted. We wanted to utilize these cores. Uh, we wanted to go into a database that could help us do our read queries much faster. And uh, here's a screenshot of our MemSQL cluster. Um, those green bars are the CPUs being actually utilized across two nodes, and we can scale those out. If we need more nodes, we'll add more nodes. Um, and this keeps us in SQL. This allows our team that knows how to write SQL, a performant understanding the data. It's the same sort of data, just in a uh, different database. So that's the problem. Um, our data isn't in MemSQL. We need to, we need to get it there. So we also don't have much engineering time. Uh, the first tool that we wanted to use was utilizing replace into syntax. It's not a SQL standard, uh, but it's part of the MySQL flavors of SQL, where it's very much like an insert into. Um, merely replace re the word insert with replace, and your rows, if they already exist in the database with the primary key, will be overwritten with the new values. Um, if they didn't exist, then it's just like an insert. Uh, it's extremely easy to write. There's no on-duplicate logic to figure out or which columns to set. You just say this is a data, and it goes in. Um, so this works for us updating and inserting new data, and it allows us to write a very simple script that is a select statement from this da database, pipe it into a replace statement onto the MemSQL side. And for the scale of database that we had, this worked very well for us. It's very simple to maintain. Um, so now our team is happier. They're more efficient. They're able to run their queries, get dashboards much uh, more efficiently. Um, then marketing gets word of this. And they're like, hey, we've got uh, JSON data. And uh, we've got our normal analytics. We want. Uh, we want some in-house analytics. Let's put our clickstream data into this database, which is so scale out and wonderful that you're saying uh, is powering all of our dashboards. And that's about 300,000 messages uh, per day that we ingest and we have stored. Um, and we have these in flat file systems. So the next question is, how do we get that into MemSQL? Um, what we used is MemSQL loader. You can point it at a file path, a file glob, and say, import all of these files into MemSQL. And it will parallelize the process. Uh, it'll look at the file name, look at the file hash, say, have I already imported this file? Skip it if it has already imported it. And a really neat thing, if the file has updated out from under you, it's got the same name, but the contents have changed, it'll take the rows that you've already inserted, delete them out of the database, re-import them from the new contents of that same file. Um, really easy to manage. The, uh, problem that we had there is we do need a tiny bit of ETL. We have JSON data, and this needs to turn into a CSV sort of data. It needs to uh, turn into something MemSQL can understand. And we wanted to keep it as close to JSON as possible. Um, that allows us to not do any ETL in the future. If we just import the JSON, a SQL team can write a select statement on the JSON without us needing to say JSON objects flatten out into a table space. We can just import the direct JSON and write SQL queries without doing ETL in the future. So our only ETL job is taking a JSON file and turning it into an ID column, the primary key, and the raw JSON itself, and piping that into this database. After we had our clickstream data in, we noticed some queries are going rather slow that the marketing team is writing. Uh, there's a select statement that is doing lots of counts on the referring domain. And we don't have referring domain as part of the JSON data. We have a referring URL. So we looked at the select statement, and in there is 
logic on logic of string select subselects of parsing out the domain part of the URL. And that's slowing down the query because we're computing that every time. Even though it's in the data, we're computing every time we do a select. So we use another MemSQL feature called a uh, persistent column. And as ugly as that query is, substring index, substring refer, locate, uh, we're computing this as we're inserting the data or we're updating the data. And if the JSON document underneath this, the uh, data refer, in this case, changes, that column updates. So now it's built into the row. It's right there available for us to query on, and the marketing team can easily just sum up numbers based on the referring domain. So we've used the replace into syntax to build some really quick update, insert, ETL ourselves. We've definitely utilized the JSON native type. It allows our SQL team to roll with new data. As new events come in, this ever-changing schemaless JSON, we can still give them the ability to query into those events. The MemSQL loader helps us pipe these files that we have directly into uh, MemSQL. And we have persistent, persistent columns for doing ETL jobs inside of MemSQL. And what we're excited for next is what just launched is a Streamliner. Um, the next problem we face at DigitalOcean is we've got a whiff of how valuable data can be, and we want more data. So I think we have our next solution, though, is we're hiring. Thanks. <laughs>